Welcome back to the Knit Crowd and Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on this ombre knit blanket together and this is a, a nice size blanket of uh, 50 inches by 60 inches and this is using Karen one pound yarn and you can see that there's a gradation of color of it transitioning from one color throughout to a next color and then final to another color and that's as a result of the Karen one pound yarn. Let me tell you a little bit more on how that's being achieved and then we're going to cover on how to do the stitches today. So as you can see in the blanket here it starts off with a, like a black color here and then it transitions and a little bit more of a other color is coming out and then it goes even more and then final to a solid color here. So it goes solid and then it transitions down a little bit and then more down and then into a solid and then it transitions again. So what you're looking at here is that there's three strands of yarn being used at one time. So when it's all solid all three colors of the strands are the same. Then what happens is, is that you can see that this layer here is that one of the black has been taken out and then one of this color has been added and then in this layer here you have two of this color and one of black. So you can see that it's fading down and by the time you get here there's only three uh, colors of the same. So let me tell, uh, show you the, what that looks like in yarn format and then we're gonna cover more in just a bit. So what we have here is a gradation of color. So when we go to start this and this is just a different color than what you see in the particular project but you happen to use three strands. So to have a solid color you need three strands of the same color just like you see here. Then you do 26 rows. What happens then is that you eliminate one of these strands out and then you replace it with the next color that's gonna come in eventually. And so one of the strands will then be the new color and two strands are the original just like you see here. So it's gonna make this color transition down and get ready for the next one. So you do 26 rows of that. Then what happens is that you eliminate one of these extra extra ones here and then replace it with two then of this color and just leave one here and then you're going to continue for 26 rows. Then finally then all these strands will be the same color. So then you can see that it's transitioned from this and it's getting a little more faded, more faded but this color is starting to pick up. So after you get this solid one done for 26 then the next color that's up here one of the strands comes out and this color comes in. Then the next 26 rows then will be two of this, one of that and etc. So you can see it's a gradation of color. You can do this in crochet too. It's actually a uh, fabulous idea to do. So I've actually done a sample just to show you what it looks like and let's look at that next. So here's a sample that I did and just to make sure that I understood the pattern you can see the beautiful raised edges just like you see and uh, it's a really kind of a cool thing. So as I mentioned I had three strands that were the same and then I went for a certain amount and for this is just a sample so I was just changing as I wanted to. So then in the next part then I added this color back in okay just for a little section so that you can see that it dolls down and then in the next section then I added another one here and eliminated one of these out and you can see that it's gotten lighter and lighter. Then I ended up with a solid color and then as I transition to this color then one of the strands comes out and then another one comes out and then we're back to solid and then you can see that you go back to the original just like this. So it's a kind of a neat idea of eliminating strings out in order to have a, a change of color. So instead of such a, a bam 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 of color you can just uh, do this with a gradation and it turns out quite fabulous just like that. Now when you're going to look at the particular pattern that we're going to do I thought the designer had made a mistake and that's because I'm new to knitting and I'm really kind of uh, really kind of weary on knitting patterns. And so what I noticed is that it was a uh, purl to knit to purl to knit to. So I thought okay well then that's kind of a ridge idea just like I've done in another sample just like here. And I thought to myself well that's not exactly what the pattern looks like and then I noticed that the designer has you add on an extra stitch right at the very end. And so then I noticed in the next one is that the stitch appears to be moved over and it appears to be zigzagging. So originally when I started this I thought I was actually doing it wrong because it wasn't looking like this but then this actually looks just like the, the sample. So what I had to do is I had to put trust and I had to fully understand this pattern that it's not just knit to, uh, knit to purl to to give a ridged uh, edge like this like you would technically see but it's actually slightly different to give you these more raised uh, uh, bumps on both sides of the work just like you see here. So it's kind of a neat idea. So let's look at that in diagram format just to illustrate exactly what I'm talking about. So here's a really crude diagram of the ombre knit blanket. So what's going to happen is that we're going to start off and it's going to be purl to knit to purl to knit to. So the plus signs are where you knit and the blanks are where you purl. So it shows at the end is that you're going to uh, purl 
right at the very end. But then if you looked at row number two in the instructions it starts off immediately with knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two and you knit right at the very end. So you have this extra one that's working on the edge. And so because of that these knit stitches like see that they're kind of zigzagging that's what's creating that ombre look. It, and if they were sitting right on top of each other you would have that other look of just like this. Okay, but it's not and it's coming right over. So the nice thing about this is that I was able to remember this pattern quite easily by thinking about how the line is finished. Let me share a little more about that. So I came to realize that as I finish a row, so I knit, I purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two and then I purl. So when I go to turn my knitting needles around I immediately because I just purled here I know that my next row coming up is knit two. Okay and then I continue all the way. So I re remembered this quite easily is that the very last stitch so if you come across the last one is a knit stitch here so that I re when I turn my needles the next one up is immediately gonna be purl two. Okay do you see that? So here is a purl two. I turn my work so I know that the next uh, one in the rows are gonna be knit two. Okay so I come all the way to the edge. I finish with the knit and so therefore when I turn it I know that my next row is gonna be purl two. You see that? So it's completely opposite to what you've just done. So if you get here and it's it's a purl one when you turn you immediately just go up and then you see that you're knitting two. So it's just a matter of remembering what's opposite to each other. So this zigzagging is actually really quite easy to maintain once you look at it from that perspective. So what you're gonna need today is you're going to need a 10 millimeter or a US 15 circular knitting needles and it's asking you to have a 40 inch, they are to be 40 inches. So it's 40 inches from the tip here all the way through the strand and back. So you don't join them as you finish off. So what happens is that all your knitting project is being held on this cord as you're as you're knitting across. So it's actually really quite an easy thing to do. So my particular sample I just did it on a straight knitting needle because it's just a, a sample. So what happens if you want to change the size of this particular pattern? I can tell you that. That's next. So if you like this pattern so much even if you just wanted to use a regular yarn just one strand this whole pattern runs on the idea of multiples of four. So if you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four and then at the very end uh, when you're casting on if you add that extra one you can get that extra one that's required in order for you to do that zigzagging look. So remember that the multiples are four so can, uh, count in multiples of four and then when you're satisfied add one at the end and you can change this pattern for any size that you wish. So let's begin. You're gonna need three balls of yarn. So if you're a yarn collector like I am, <laughs> you got lots of stash. If you have three balls of the exact same color you don't have to make miniature balls. You'll have to make them much bigger than this if you're doing this uh, particular project. So it requires two balls of each one of the, of the three colors that you have. So this means that you have to if you're gonna only follow that and only buy two balls that means that you'll have to make a third ball by winding it and etc. So if you have an extra ball it just makes it a lot easier when you're using all three of the same colors. So let's uh, begin and we're gonna take three strands of the same color to begin just like you see here and so that's two and three. So you're gonna treat those like it's all together as one strand. So let's just create a slip knot and uh, we have slower tutorials available on how to do slip knotting and you're going to create that and you're gonna insert that into or put that onto your knitting needle just like you see here. So now we're gonna get ready to cast on. Let's just review that real quick. So to cast on what you're just gonna do is that you're going to insert this knitting needle here and you're gonna insert it into the uh, loop and it's gonna be in behind just like you see here. So you want to have your strands of yarn and, uh, available to you so that you can access it and move it around on your fingers. So let's put the yarn into our fingers and we have slower tutorials on how to hold yarn. You may hold it differently. That's completely up to you. So I'm gonna throw it over the back one that's already inserted in and I'm just gonna flip it out forward like so. But as I go to put it on this knitting needle I want to just rotate it and just come up underneath like this and insert it onto the knitting needle. So now you've just got two stitches on. Remember that the multiples here are in sets of four plus one but if you would like to uh, be able to do this afghan without uh, altering it you have to put 101 cast ons on this. So remember to cast on you're gonna insert into the, the loop, rotate around, throw it over that back one, bring it forward okay and then just rotate it and come up like that and insert on 
Okay, so and you continue to do that until you have enough stitches onto your knitting needles. I'm only gonna do a small sample today because the stitch work is the same all the way across and it's just a matter of understanding your multiples. So I'm just going to put on 13 stitches onto my knitting needles. I'm just gonna speed up a little bit. Now using three yarns at one time, it can be a little bit of a challenge but you do get used to it. I found with myself is that I was starting to blaze along pretty good on this. So as the more and more yarn gets on, you're gonna notice it's gonna fall onto the cord and it's gonna collect there and that's just gonna hold it there while you're not using it. So it's a kind of an e easy way of doing it. So I found with myself with these knitting needles, see how long they are? They fit right into my hand perfectly. I find if those are too short when you're doing circular knitting needles, I find they kind of jab into the back of my uh, palm. And so you'll have to find knitting needles that are working for you and so, so if it's not completely comfortable for you, you're experiencing the same thing. Look towards your knitting needles because it could be that that is causing you some problems. So let's count our stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so each one of the three is just operating together as one. So this is 10. Okay, and I'm gonna do 11. And 12. And remember it's multiples of, of four, so that's now I got 12, so I have my multiples of four. I have to add on one extra in order to get that ridge look. So I have a total of 13 on my knitting needles right at this time. Okay, so let's begin row number one together. So let's begin row number one. We're gonna immediately start off with purling of two. So let's uh, put this back into my hands, okay, and we're gonna purl. So what you wanna do is that you wanna come up and make sure that the yarn is in the front of the knitting needles and you wanna come in right and directly so that this needle is right on top. So throw it over that top, so just coming up and over, okay? So now you have it up and over and now you're just gonna flip it backwards and then just slide that one off the hook or off the knitting needles. Sorry, I'm used to crocheting more so if I slip up on hooks and needles, it just don't mind me. So the first two are pearls, so coming into the next one, it's the strand is already in the front so you don't have to worry about it, so just throw it over and push it back. So two of those in a row are going to be purl. Now you want to do knitting for the next two. So in order to start the knitting, you have to move this strand backward and in behind before you start and then insert into the loop and throw it up over the back. Okay, so and you'll do two of those. So now that you did the first one, the strand is already in the back side so you don't have to worry about it and coming in and throwing it up over the back for the knit stitch. Okay and slide it up. So the next two are now purls. So move the strand forward first, insert in, throw it up over the front. Okay, so you're using those, those three strands as if they're one string. Now when you go to start any kind of project, it gets really kind of tough to be able to move these on the knitting needles but once you get past the two or three rows, it gets a lot easier. So it's already in the front, so you're purling this one as well. Okay, so then you purled two, now you move the strand back and knit the other two. Okay, so I'm just gonna speed up. So it's knit two, purl two, all the way down. Okay, so the next one is purl, so move it forward, in, around, and back. Okay, and then here we go. So we only have three left, so the next two are knit, Move that yarn back first, knit the next two, and you're left with one. And that's that one that I talked about in the very beginning. So yeah, it's purl, so move it forward and purl that last. So you have to remember that you just purled that last one because that makes a difference on the next one. So now that you have everything on here, you're going to turn your knitting needles around and you're going to start. So the last one was a purl. So that means that the first two are going to be knit. So let's just get everything back into my hands properly. And so the first two are gonna be knit. Okay, because I finished with that one pearl by itself and that creates that zigzag look. So throw it up over the back for the, for the knit. So one and two and then pearl the next one. So come in the front first 
and then purl the next two. Do you see that? So it's really not a hard pattern to, in order to follow. So that was just purl two. I'm gonna knit the two. So move that strand in behind first. So if you're familiar with knitting and uh, and uh, doing the purl and the knit stitch, you will be already aware on how to do this real quick. So move this forward because you're gonna purl the next two. So it's all in sets of two. So you'll see the pattern probably develop in the probably in the first four rows. Uh, it's not immediately right away and that's why I was getting all panic and tacky when I was looking at it. So I'm gonna knit the next two. And I'm only getting panic and tacky because I'm starting to learn how to read patterns for knitting. And so for myself I'm having trouble visualizing. So how do you read patterns? You just gotta take step by step and tutorial by tutorial. Okay, so continuing to purl the last two. And I'm left with one stitch. So if I just purled that one, I gotta knit that last one. So I'm knitting that last one. Just like that. And now I'm ready to go. So I'm just gonna flip my needles and start again. So if I knit that last one, that means that the first one is gonna be purl. So I'm gonna purl the first two. One and two. And then I'm gonna knit the next two. So do you see how to do that? So what I'm gonna do now is that you have to do 26 rows of every one of the color uh, transitions that you do. So in this case I've got um, the total of three of the same color working at the same time. So eventually after 26 rows one of these colors or one of these strands is going to become obsolete and out. And I'm gonna replace it with the new color that it's gonna eventually transition to. So what I'm come back, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, bring up my other project that I had worked on and I want to show you exactly what I was doing with that because I'm gonna show you how to eliminate one strand out and then how to add another one and then once you understand that you can pretty much blaze through this whole thing uh, pretty uh, without a lot of trouble. So if as long as you can remember how to count the two it's all really good. So I'm gonna knit the next two. And the final one is a purl by itself. Remember move that strand first. So if you finished off with the purl what strand or what stitch are you gonna start off with when you turn? You're gonna start off with the knit stitch. So you can see that it's really not that evident yet. You gotta go a little bit longer and then you'll start these, you'll see these ridges all starting to develop and it's really quite amazing. So let me bring up my other sample for you. Just in case you're curious I do do samples. These big um, hooks. They almost are big uh, contraptions. They look like paper clips to me in, in some kind of way, safety pins. So what this is doing is it's holding my work. So if I wanna like if I get like um, if I'm not paying attention or I get bored of a project I can slip a project onto one of these and so I can just hold it there so I can use the knitting needles for something else and it's just uh, I think we all do it in some way. We sometimes um, we want our knitting needles and then we pull out our project uh, midway instead of actually finishing. So this is a great way. So I'm just inserting the strands back onto the knitting needles. Just being very careful about it and just collecting everything that was on the original. So when you get 26 rows and you're starting to transition from color to color you have to eliminate this out. So when I last left you we were working on three colors of the same color just like you see here. So what's gonna happen eventually is that you're going to have to eliminate one of these strands out. It can be any one of the strands it doesn't really matter. I would look to the yarn ball towards that because I think one of these is going to a main yarn ball for me. I don't wanna cut that off if it's uh, still working there and I, and I can use it for the whole thing. So what I want to do is that I want to uh, look at it here and I want to transition to the next color. So I'm just gonna take my next color that I would like to move to and just grab my yarn ball. And I want to take the strand and loop it up forward but I wanna leave a long strand here so I can use a darning needle later at a certain time to use it. So when I was working on this particular project I can see here that these two were knit and the last one was purl. I just happened to remember that and this first one is going to be knit. So what I wanna do is that I wanna insert my knitting needles in first. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to transition color. So you want to take the two strands you're going to keep. So I got one of these already cut for me and I just cut, already cut it and I'm gonna loop it up over the back. But there's only two strands so far. So I wanna take that third strand of what I wanna change it to. Okay, and I wanna leave that extra long as well and I wanna loop it up and I wanna loop it up so that when you're, you're looping it that the strand that is in front here 
coming down is going to be going to the yarn ball and the other strand in behind right here is towards the end of the, the strand. So carefully and you always have to do it carefully is that you could just gotta hold on to things okay and you just gotta knit the first one and get it through. Okay so you see all three strands are now on here and I'm gonna just move it up and up and over. So what I want to do is that I want to grab only the strands that I'm currently gonna work with. Okay so I got my three here and so the color that I, I dropped is gonna be here and the end of the straggler is going to be here and I'm gonna leave that out of the way for me to use a darning needle later in order to secure that in. So I'm gonna knit the next one here because that's part of the pattern so let me just do that. And so I'm using the strand then of the new color and I'm moving forward. Okay so I'm gonna purl the next two and I'm gonna do 26 rows of this combination of yarn strands as they go across. Okay so the next one is knit and you do that. So at the very end of your project what you can do or if, if you wanna work on it as you're going through you have to take a darning needle and secure those loose ends in uh, so that they don't fall out on you at a later time. So I don't really worry about it. I have got strands hanging out on this project on the other side. I can go in afterward if I'm confident with it but if you feel like it's, it may be a compromising thing if you're gonna move your project around a lot then you may want to take a darning needle and secure that and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. So I'm just gonna continue to knit um, as the pattern suggests. I'm just using the new color combination and moving my way across like so. Okay so then the last one is going to be knit. So that means I'll have to start purl next time. So what I wanna do is that I wanna just lay this down and I got my strands here but you're gonna take a darning needle and secure all that in. Let me show you how to do that. So what you wanna do is you wanna grab a darning needle and put that strand, just one of them so far, you got two of them to do and what you wanna do is just pull everything nice and snug Okay and using the darning needle you wanna weave yourself only in the color that the yarn is, is in. Okay so I don't want to take this color and put it through a, a different color. I want to really kinda hide that in. So I'm gonna go back and forth three times inside and when I go to do it I don't want to pro uh, put any extra pressure to uh, make the, the project warp in any way. If you go back and forth three times in different areas you got basically a, a really great seal and if you wanna go four times that's up to you. Your project can never stretch more than three directions at a time anyway. So once you get that in then you can just safely cut that. It's out of your way. You're gonna go back and you're gonna do the next one. Okay this is the new color that you had added on. And again this one here. So this one here you want to stay within the strands that have the same color. Okay you're just gonna go across a little bit and again I would probably wait and do this after you get uh, by so many stitches and then coming back in the other direction but this is how you would do it. So I was able to do this first color easily because I was further up but this one is a little higher and closer to the, the needles that I might wanna wait until I do that later. So I'm gonna go through make sure nothing is warping on you and then you can just safely cut that. So that's how you would transition your colors if you were to uh, do this particular pattern and then you'll do 26 rows and then change it and then eliminate one of these extra um, first color and then replace it with another one of these and then so on and you'll see that you'll get more and more of a transition. So let's uh, just quickly review on how to cast off. Okay once you're satisfied with this particular project and you got the length that you want it's now time to cast off. So what you wanna do is that you wanna cast off in a way that is going to make sense to the pattern. So for example last time I did purl two this was a knit so I'm gonna start off with two with purl. So you're maintaining the pattern as is but you're gonna be doing a cast off method. So the first two, uh, uh, two stitches will be a purl okay and what you're going to do is that you're just gonna purl as normal the first one so one and you're gonna purl the next one. That's maintaining the pattern but before you continue you have to start the casting off right now. So taking the strand, so you're gonna have to knit the next two. So move that strand in behind anyway, it just makes it easier and grab that first strand and just carry it up over that first one 
right up over top of the knitting needles. Take your time doing this. You would hate to get this far and it's, it's not acting uh, for you properly. So that just went up over. So you're gonna knit the next one. So the next two are knit but before you go on to the second knit you have to take this first one up and over. So you now just every time you do something the, the stitch in behind just comes up and over. Okay. So the next one is a knit. Okay so the next two are purls. So you're gonna move that strand back. So if you just knit your, your cast off instead of following the pattern it's really really super obvious. You'll be very upset with yourself. So that one was a purl. So again I can just move that strand in behind as I'm working on it but I gotta remember that the next one is also a purl. So I gotta bring that strand forward before I do it. Okay so bring it forward again. It's just a matter of getting it out of your way so you can see it better. Okay so that's a purl. So that was the second purl of two. Okay so the strand's already in behind now so the next one is knit. So you can see it's easier to cast off when you're in the knitting mode. But if you don't follow the pattern then you end up with a, a line right at the very end that just looks out of place. And so you just continue to do that all the way across. Okay so I just dropped a strand. Again want to pay attention to that. You don't want to be lazy about it right. Okay and so then you continue on all the way to the very end. So let's just recap. So in today's tutorial you learned how to cast on, you learned how to do the stitch combination, you learned how to change your colors and uh, be able to secure your loose ends and then you learned how to cast off. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Knit Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. This is Yarn Braid Ridge Knit Blanket and this is a fabulous idea and really kind of a cool concept at the same time. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.